and Frank Siller is here with us in studio. Um, this story just breaks your heart, right? You've got a young father, uh, a loyal NYPD officer right now, and now you have uh, a widow and a child who's going to grow up without a father because of this senseless violence we've seen in New York. What runs through your mind when you hear this story? Well, you know, it's so sad because it's unnecessary. I mean, <laughs> he just told them to move their car and <laughs> and he gets shot and killed and now their uh, family is left without their father and their husband. So, um, you know, just move that because it's echoing. Um, this family, I spoke to Stephanie, uh, that's his widow, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and I let her know that, uh, you know, New York is mourning with her and praying for her, that the whole nation is, and I can't tell you how many people have called the foundation and has reached out uh, to help this family, and we're gonna make sure that she never has to worry about her mortgage again. That's, that's amazing to even hear that, to, to be able to step up and, and to use, utilize a Tunnel to Towers to be able to help um, the fallen officer's family like that. Can, can you talk to, talk to us about that? And, and that, because that's not, is it something typical that you would do to step up and help a, an NYPD family? The last time I believe we, um, we uh, remembered a fallen NYPD officer, a couple of detectives, I think it was back a couple years back. Um, and then we have this senseless tragedy again here. Uh, can you talk to us about Tunnel to Towers and how they stepped up? So, you know, we do that for every first responder in America who dies in the line of duty that leaves a young family behind. Behind. We pay off their mortgage, over 200 a year we've been doing. So it, it's, uh, it's an incredible amount. Uh, but when it hits home right here in my backyard, I mean, you know, I'm a New Yorker all my life. I live on Staten Island. My brother, Russ, lived uh, in Rockville Santa, grew up there. My youngest brother, Stephen, who was a firefighter who ran through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel on 9-11, uh, lived with my oldest brother because my parents died when my youngest brother, Stephen, was young. And so he lived out in Rockville Center. So we're familiar with this whole community. Um, uh, I know it's a very tight community. I know, so I, I just let you know about the outpouring of support. Um, the Thomas Rzewick, uh, the CEO of Maspeth Federal Savings Bank, right, called me up yesterday and uh, we, we talked with uh, quite a few people that were reaching out to do a lot of good work for us. And he promised, Frank, whatever you need, they'll make sure the mortgage is paid off. So I said, you mean if I even didn't raise any money? He goes, yes. Ah. I said, well, we're gonna raise money. And I said, well, I don't, I don't need you for all of it, but I'll probably need you for a lot of it, whatever it may be. So it's that kind of concern. It, everybody is upset. Everybody is mourning uh, this loss. And you see a, a young, vibrant family, a family of service. So Stephanie, uh, right, the widow, his brother is a police officer. Um, there's a whole family of police officers and military that served our country, or served our community, um, that, you know, this family knows all about service. And I gotta tell you another thing. They supported Tunnel to Towers, you know, not knowing obviously they'd ever have to lean on or uh, ex expect any kind of support from us, but uh, they support us. They've come, their family has come to the run and they donate the $11 because we ask everybody to do $11 a month. You know, that's how we, you know, be able to make this promise and commitment to all these great heroes throughout America. They were doing that. They were doing wow. that. They believed in, in our foundation. And I, when I spoke to her, I said, I know you're a longtime supporter of Tunnel to Towers, and I'm sorry that, you know, that, uh, that this has happened to your family, but we're always going to be there for you. That's incredible. And as you point out, the support just coming in, right, the donations, that's so wonderful to hear how generous people are, obviously, because this family is going through the worst possible situation right now. And we know the former president, Donald Trump's gonna stop by and actually attend um, his wake this afternoon, which, which you know, what, what does that, me what message does that send, Frank, when you've got the former president making time to stop by? How serious this is, that there's a tremendous loss. Listen, part of life is showing up yeah. and being there for those others that are in, certainly in time of need. And I think it speaks volumes of uh, what he really believes about for our men and women in uniform, whether you're serving our community as a police officer or a firefighter, or you're serving our country. And for him to, uh, to do that and, 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 and go there today, I, I, my, I tip my hat to him and he's doing it for the right reason. He want, he's there for support for this family during the 
toughest time in their life ever. And the current administration is often pressed about crime or attack on police officers or soft on crime district attorneys. Um, this specific case here, as we know, a career criminal that we've seen um, linked to, again, the, the officer's death. Um, the White House was asked about this moment and, and, and Officer Diller, and we have that sound if we could play it. As it relates to um, uh, the death of the officer, look, our hearts go out uh, to this officer who tragically lost his life in the line of duty. We're also praying for his family during this difficult time, uh, who now has an empty seat at their dinner table. President Biden is deeply grateful for the sacrifices police officers make to keep our community safe. Uh, this shooting is yet another painful reminder of the toll of gun violence, that what it's, in, what it's doing to inflict uh, on families and our communities and our nation. Uh, and that's why the president signed more than two dozen executive actions. So you can hear, uh, number one, they're getting a lot of flack for not, and I say them, the White House, not mentioning the officer's uh, name, Jonathan Diller. Um, but just saying the officer. Uh, but then number two, pivoting this conversation about the loss of a police officer, the senseless tragedy of that, the, the loss of a family member of a, of a uh, New York citizen here, um, to gun violence and, and gun prevention. Um, and getting a lot of flack for that on top of President Biden being at Radio City Music Hall. He's in New York City. He's in New York City, or he will be later today, excuse me, having a $25 million fundraiser with Obama, with Clinton, with A-list celebrities at a time when this wake is going on. And again, not even mentioning the officer's name. How does that play with New Yorkers? I don't think it plays well at all. And look, uh, those two thugs shouldn't have been on the street. Bottom line, they should not be in the street. Over 21 arrests on 114 and another attempted a murder on, on one of them. Yeah. These, these, these uh, people should not have been on the street. And it's, it's, these are the reasons why our blocks aren't safe, our communities aren't safe, and we better make sure we make a promise to every first responder, God forbid something like this happens, we're gonna take care of your family. To be a police officer today is not easy, and it's most certainly here in, in, in New York. And uh, you know, I'm not gonna get to the political side of it, but I'm gonna tell you right now that uh, we better all uh, we should be kissing the ground that our police officers walk on instead of spitting on the ground so like so many people do. And uh, this, um, this, this city and this country better wake up before it's too late.